Good to know you're still with us. The breakfast continues with Off the Press. And our guest this morning is Aisha Yusufu, the co convener of Bring Back Our Girls Group. Thank you for uh, staying with us, Aisha. Uh, before we went on that uh, short break, because of audio, uh, you were talking, uh, you're sharing your thoughts on the situation in Edo State. Could you just wrap that quickly and then we'll go to the next paper? Yeah, so what I said about the Edo State, where we have. Uh, uh, about Sakize Yamu and others committing to peaceful uh, election is the fact that they get their supporters to get worked up, you know, going after each other. People are maiming themselves. Blood is being drawn. A whole lot is going on in Edo State. Edo State is now uh, a, a battlefield. And these are people who will make up and continue their lives as if nothing has happened before for them. It's really not about ideology. It's a game to them. And that's the reason why they easily move from one party to the other. And they don't care about it. But at the end of the day, their supporters are, end up being the ones that are the losers. And I think it's high time for these supporters of political uh, figures to realize that the, the, the people that they fight for actually don't fight. What they do is a proxy war and they use people and the people should get to, to, get to a place where they, they say enough is enough and stop all of that. All right. Let, let's move on to the Nigerian Tribune. Shoyinka backs or passenger says Nigeria more divided under Buhari. That was also captured on this day newspaper, but they didn't put it as the screamer like the Nigerian Tribune has done. And just above the masthead, you see the issue with the uh, presidency and labor demanding reversal. That meeting was stalled, as we know. A couple of riders to that is once tangible palliative for workers, Nigerians. And then fuel price should be 181 per liter. That's the federal government talking now. There doesn't seem to be um, a diminution uh, in the price. Rather, uh, that's a hike. That's what government is proposing. Um, APC begs Nigerians to endure Falano, 80 groups, TUC to protest fuel electricity price hike September 23. Um, let, let's take your thoughts on that first, and then we'll take a look at the Shoinka back in uh, The labor situation with the federal government. The price is going to be, uh, should be, that's what the federal government is saying, 181 naira per liter. Uh, so, so for me, uh, on, on the issue of price hike, why is government fixing the price? Didn't they say they have deregulated? Didn't they say they have removed uh, what so, there's no longer free subsidy being paid? So why is government determining the price? That's what I don't get. And I think that's where the focus should be on. It shouldn't be on what the price is, on, on the fact that there should be total deregulation of that sector. We cannot have a situation where you are saying to people that the way you sell this food price of liter in Lagos State, where this bill is being brought in, that's the same pr price you're going to sell it in Edo State, you're going to sell it in, uh, in Borno State or Sokoto. So who's going to pay the difference? So you don't expect the, 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 import, the business person to be the one to pay that difference. So as long as there's, there's a fixing of price, that means there's no deregulation. Price, price reduction or increase is not the same thing as uh, the regulation. And uh, for me, I think that's where the focus should be on. Most importantly, the fact that in 2016, this same government had said that they have stopped, they have deregulated, they had they had stopped fair subsidy, and they that was why they increased the price. And Nigerians were like, okay, let's go with the price. So why are we having all of this now? For me, it's not about the pricing. For me, it's about government taking its hands off that and let's stop this fuel subsidy. And also, there should be deregulation. Let the market determine its, its price. Nobody fixes the price of diesel. And diesel is one that it's more of the commercial product than petrol. I wonder why we always do things upside down in our country. It should, should they be going on strike, um, um, on, on a protest? Is that something we need now, considering the fact that, I mean, we're, we're uh, uh, on the optimistic side that will contain this virus that's the COVID-19 to a certain degree going out in mass numbers in, isn't that going to negatively impact on us the thing is that for me if the protest it's when you say it's just about few I'm like you know there's so many things worrying Nigeria right now so insecurity has killed more people than COVID-19 
I mean, uh, among the headline that you see, I think there's there's an outrage where uh, SARS had driven as uh, uh, chased some people and three people died, one injured. It has, has been reported. So there are a lot of things that are killing Nigerians. I mean, coming out for protest, it's not even the issue. Nigerians need to be on the streets protesting. But for me, my main take is that what are you really protesting on? Is it the increase in uh, fuel price? Because at this moment, we should say government shouldn't have any business doing that. Is it about the bad governance? Is it about the lack of transparency? Is it about the fact that there's rising cost of living and government isn't doing anything? Rather, government is taxing more people. And, and there are a whole lot of things that uh, we, we should be protesting over. And for me, if Nigerians need to be on the street right now, because we are dying at home more than what the, the numbers that COVID-19 has taken. Okay, let, let's get your thoughts on the uh, backing of Obasan Joba Shoika on the issue of the country uh, being divided. Obviously, you, you agree that there is a lot of problems, but do you, would you go out to the point of saying that we are a divided nation? Absolutely. We are an extremely divided nation. And I, I don't think I saw, I, I'm, I'm 46, I'll be 47 December, and I don't think I've seen Nigeria as divided as it is right now, even after the 1993 election. It wasn't this bad. Uh, things are really bad. And it's really sad for me, uh, the, pre the president dividing this country to the extent with his statements, with his actions, with his, uh, with his, with his, Body language, if, 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 I may, if I may use that uh, expression, he's, he has seriously divided the country from 97 to 5%, the kind of appointments that he has made. And it's really heinous, heinous in the sense that this is a man who, for the first time after 1993, where there was COP 93 and Nigerians rallied together, Nigerians again rallied around him in 2014 to bring the change mantra and all over Nigeria, irrespective of religion and tribe, people came together Nigerians came together and you expected that in, in, in the first a year of his being in office, he would have done everything to unite Nigerians more, go around Nigerians and use that change mantra to bring the people together and tell us, look, we need to work together. But unfortunately, what the president did was to divide the people more and he has done that in a whole lot of things. Like I said earlier, his words his appointments, his actions, and even his silence on certain issues. For, ex for example, when he was sick and it was being rumored that oh, he was poisoned, and, and he never did anything to, you know, to, to that particular uh, rumors and everything to bring it down. And this has further divided at, at the nation. It's, it's really sad that, that a man who, who the people voted for, especially people, uh, how do I put it, the, the masses in Nigeria actually voted for him. But he has done everything uh, against them, and most importantly, uh, to separate them and keep them divided. Right, Maybe that's see. how he gets his power, anyway. Let's see what we can do with one more paper before we wrap things up. The Guardian uh, is next. Inflation hits 29-month high. That's the big one for the Guardian newspaper on your screen now. And then, of course, that's that uh, Economic Council meeting captured on the front page. NLC takes final decision on fuel hike today. I'm expecting to hear more from that uh, union much later. Uh, Nigeria faces total collapse, extinction. Shoinka wants a recap of some of the other headlines we've seen. FG Lagos State stop bad operations along Marina Coastline. Um, a bit of Edo State, Obaseki, Izei Yamusa and Peace Pact. Uh, those are some of the headlines you'll find on the uh, Guardian newspaper. Uh, before I uh, hand over to you, Aisha, uh, let's look at the rider to that one. Inflation hits 29 month high. Uh, price hike at 13.22%. Buhari Imefile, Sea Hope. Imported food tops with 17.3% uh, rate. And then we have uh, CBN blames VAT regime border closure. Your take. Well, why Buhari and Emefele are seeing hope, Nigerians are seeing hopelessness, and that's just the way it is. And even from their action, there's no coordination from, from, from uh, the two of them. The last time we saw CBN had given uh, waivers for some companies, which of course was questionable. Some companies were chosen uh, to bring in uh, maize uh, for the production of uh, poultry feeds. And then the next thing, there was a directive after that from the president that no, no uh, forex should be given for the importation of fertilizer 
or any maze or anything. And so you're wondering where's the co coordination? Why is everything so haphazard? So for them to just stay, they still hope. They still hope in their own personal life and what they're doing. But there's no hope for the common man on the street. And things are really expensive. Not just that things are expensive. There's no money. There are no jobs. Jobs are being lost. Uh, the economy is contracting more and more, and and uh, companies are closing down, and that means more people are being thrown into the labor market. And it, it's a really bad time. And beyond all of this, there's no security uh, for people. There's so people are being kidnapped all the time. Security agents are coming after uh, people. You know, when they describe life in Nigeria right now is just short and brutish, and it's it's really sad. And we need to do something about it. We cannot be coasting. Coasting is not going to take us anywhere. And uh, God forbid, it's not going to solve. It. It's not my question. It's not going to solve it. It's us making uh, demands on our government that is going to ensure that we get good governance, accountability, and transparency. Right now, Nigeria is, is just on a free pool. Okay, I think we can do the, the headline on the Daily Sun um, in the next three minutes. Um, it's uh, Govs, INEC Rec, APC, PDP bigwigs on US visa ban list. UK also to impose ban, prosecute Nigerian election riggers. That's it on your screen. And then let me quickly squeeze in this one. Anambra police rescue eight children trafficked from southeast, south, south. That's some cherry news for a change. Your take. Uh, thank God uh, kid, those kid, uh, the kids have been rescued. There's a lot of trafficking going on and you find that the children are just being taken. And this has been happening for years. There's something that needs to be done more about uh, the missing people in Nigeria. A lot of people are, are getting missing all, all, all the time. And I'll just so quickly say that, well, the ban for me personally, the ban on, on some big weeks, for me, it's a good thing. Yeah, some people might say that, oh, U.S. also has its own abuses. Yeah, let's also ban them. Let every country be a watchdog for the other country and ensure that the right things are being done. Because most times, all these are politicians and those we have in offices. They really don't care about the voices in Nigeria, about the people in Nigeria. But when they are being sanctioned from abroad, uh, you see uh, it, it hits them the most. And beyond the U.S., and I think Europe also should take a leave from this and do that because they really go there uh, to Europe a lot for their medical treatment and, and all of that. There, is, there, there needs to be more because if there's a problem being caused anywhere, it's a problem for everyone. All right, thank you so much, Aisha Yusuf, for always giving us your time on Off the Press. It's appreciated. Thank you so much for having me. Do have a good day. Yeah, yeah you too.